Welcome to the Hidden History series. In this episode, we will discuss the construction of the lighthouses of Tartaria or the Old World. It would seem that a lot of these ornate buildings either date back further and they once functioned like beacons. And the sites have been built upon at later dates. Before Atlantis was destroyed around 10,000 BC, there had been crystal lighthouses that brightly shone from the coastlines that much of Western science refuses to admit could have existed. The Atlantean islands called Posifis or Earth Chief were important locations for the crystal lighthouses to be constructed. The oldest lighthouse on planet Earth is the Lighthouse of Alexandria, sometimes called the Pharos of Alexandria, built from 246 BC, built by the famous Greek architect known as Sostranas Kraskrito, who designed the Lighthouse of Alexandria. Once it was completed, the overall design of the lighthouse was eventually used as the prototype for European lighthouses. The Lighthouse of Alexandria then became the seventh wonder of the ancient world because of its design. Apparently, earthquakes happening from 956 AD destroyed this beautiful building. The final remnants of the Lighthouse of Alexandria disappeared on the 25th of September, 1480. Whatever the true usage of this lighthouse was will never be fully understood. However, the Lighthouse of Alexandria was an incredible edifice and looked like some sort of Hellenic temple. Another very old lighthouse, but with very little remains, is the Kundasi Lighthouse, which was constructed between 1934 BC to 1926 BC. The foundations of the Kundasi Lighthouse indicate the edifice would have been over 150 feet in height. An incredible Hellenic lighthouse was the Colossus of Rhodes. It was effectively a lighthouse statue of the Greek solar deity called Helios Olympos that was erected in the cityscape of Rhodes on the Greek island of Rhodes, which is located in the Mediterranean basin. Apparently, the Colossus of Rhodes was designed by the Greek sculptor known as Charles Isiron in 280 BC, and it then then became another of the seven wonders of the ancient world. During 226 BC, a massive earthquake rupture toppled Colossus of Rhodes. Another possible Tartarian lighthouse is the Tower of Hercules, which was built by the Phoetians, which is located in Galicia of northwestern Spain. Until the 20th century, it was known as the, the Farum Brigantium, or Lighthouse of the Robbers. And the word Pharos was the Greek language and obviously influenced the naming Tower of the Hercules. This beautiful Spanish lighthouse was originally constructed by the Phoetians from 265 BC in northwestern Spain. The notable Roman emperor called Marcus Euripides Trianus had it built from 103 AD. However, the Tower of Hercules was then re-renovated in 1791 during the reign of King Charles III of Spain. The perfectly built Hook Lighthouse of County Wexford in South Eastern Ireland was apparently built from 1169 to 1172 by the Anglo nobleman called Richard de Clare, the second Earl of Pembroke. It was home to Catholic monks from 1236 until 1758, who were the custodians of this lighthouse. In 1671, a new but still coal-burning lantern was installed on top of the tower to replace the initial photonic beam transmitter. The coal fire was finally abandoned on the 14th of January 1791 when a well-oiled lantern 12 foot in diameter with lamps was installed. I would think that these lighthouses go back a lot further and were only rebuilt and redesigned. 
According to the narrative of Western science, the initial European lighthouses burned fires with wood, coals and candles during the medieval period. In the initial European lighthouses, the photonic source was initially fueled in an argent lamp that was invented in 1780. Substances that included seal oil, well oil, beef tallow, rapeseed oil and grapeseed oil were utilised to fuel the European lighthouses. The lenses of the argon lamp rotated by a weight-driven clockwork assembly wound by lighthouse custodians, sometimes as often as every 120 minutes or two hours. The lens assembly was sometimes floating in mercury or quicksilver to apparently reduce overall friction. Now, this is the official narrative, but when we question this, a lot of questions begin to be asked. Yes, the chemical element mercury and quicksilver was proficiently used in European lighthouses. From inside the lens assembly, photon beams was then magnified through a huge glass lens, which transmitted an intensely luminescent beam for the personnel on the sailing vessels. As simply as the European lighthouses might seem, the actual technical brilliance that is required to construct such edifices to some extent would have involved the usage of advanced occult technology in the not so distant past during the old world empire. So where has this kind of occult technology actually gone? In the Soviet Union, a very different kind of fueling device was used to emit photonic beams and this was defined as the radioisotope thermoelectric generator and the radioisotope power system. Around 1,007 radioisotope thermoelectric generators based devices was installed to fuel the Arctic lighthouses on the Russian Arctic coast. This overall installation process was carried out from 1964 to 1989. Apparently, the radioisotope thermoelectric generator or the radioisotope power system is a type of nuclear battery that utilizes thermocouples to convert the heat released by the decay of radioactive substance into electricity. Because this device has no moving parts, its deployment along the Russian Arctic coast was beneficial for extended duration as there was no risk of components wearing out or malfunctioning. When it comes to the navigational buildings of Great Tartaria and Northern Russia, it was the concept of the lighthouse which eventually became an essential aspect of the Tartarian architecture harnessing energy but also used as navigational masts for the airships and sea vessels. However, once the first mud flood reached its most destructive phase by 1740 and then in 1834 and then the third in 1892, only buried remnants of these edifices then remained. At the Exposition Universelle or the Paris Exposition of 1867, this kind of World's Fair was the setting for where the European lighthouses were displayed and promoted. They were displayed at many World Fairs, but then in the 1937 Paris Exhibition, a huge European lighthouse was considered as the showpiece, which was the Fair du Monde, or the Lighthouse of the World, which was proposed by Eugène Freshinet. His design was a technical mimicry of the old ancient lighthouses which had radiated with electrical splendour for many generations until the demise of the old world empire in 1894. The structure of the Fair de Monde was designed for the World's Fair called the Internationale Exposition of Art and Technology in Modern Life that was held for six months from the 25th of May 1937 in the Trocadero of Paris in north central France. However, the Fair de Mont was never constructed. 
The well-known diagram of the Fair de Mont or Lighthouse of the World, which anyone can view, is on page 45 and page 46 of the Modern Mechanics and Inventions that was published in 1933 by the Modern Mechanics Publishing Company in the United States. The Fair de Mont had been advertised as the Pleasure Tower, half a mile high and was designed by the incentive of Eugene Freshinet. He wanted it to be a 701 meters or 2,300 feet tall, a concrete tower with a light beacon and a restaurant at the top. A spiraling roadway on the outside of the Fair de Mont had been planned to be built to allow for driving access to a height of 1,640 feet, where 500 cars would then be able to park in ornately decorated garages. The costs were estimated to have been 2.5 million US dollars. However, the Fair de Mont was never built. Some examples of the radiating edifices that are similar to some Tartarian lighthouses include the Tolbikin Lighthouse, which is located in the Finnish Gulf of the Leningrad Oblast in northwestern Russia. The amazing Tolbikin Lighthouse was constructed in 1719. With this edifice, the Kalo Lighthouse is also relevant. Such a building is located next to the Man Loto Island in the Bothenian Sea of southwestern Finland. And the Kalo Lighthouse was constructed on the 12th of April 1851. Another example of a radiating edifice which used some technical ideas from Tartarian lighthouses is the Svitoy Lighthouse that is located on the Kola Peninsula of the Manx Oblast in northwestern Russia. The Svitoy Lighthouse was constructed on the 15th of October 1863. Lastly, there is the Marjanen Mi lighthouse which is situated on the Bothenian Gulf which is southwestern Finland. The incredible Marjanami lighthouse was constructed on the 24th of December 1871. When we look at the old maps we can clearly see that the landmass of northern Russia would have once extended to a much larger area when Great Tartaria existed. The various lighthouses of Great Tartaria were used to emit luminosity from a system of lamps and lenses that delineated zones of focused telluric electricity in the Arctic North Polar region and most of all in northern Russia. Additionally, the various Tartarian lighthouses functioned as crystalline beacons for navigational reasons. The lighthouses of Great Tartaria effectively marked dangerous coastlines, hazardous reefs, rocks and safe entries to harbours, but the different Tartarian lighthouses also assisted in aerial navigation of the airships. Once widely used, the number of operational lighthouses has declined due to the expense of maintenance and has become uneconomical since the advent of much cheaper, more sophisticated and purposeful electronic navigational routes. Is it possible that the mercury and quicksilver was not used in European lighthouses to reduce friction with the rotation of the metallic lamps, but was intended for another purpose? Were these former lighthouses actually self-generating electricity machines? Would it not have been rather impractical to build some of the European lighthouses without a source of electricity or to discern how the photonic beams could be optimally emitted before any construction started. After the mud floods in the 1800s, many of these lighthouses were then reconfigured and reconstructed. Some of the Tartarian lighthouses were completely demolished in northern Russia and northern Europe. The reason 
for this is because the Tartarian lighthouses contained information about the advanced occult technology from the Old World Empire that could have helped us improve the civilization of the modern age. But it is now our job to rediscover this technology and spiritually develop from the lessons we have learned. Thank you everyone for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you soon.